It was a year of doing TikTok and I was like looking at Tally, I was like, where's this money gonna come from, man? Like yeah. we're not making nothing. Yeah. Like solar, like I had a, a turning point in my career. Yeah. I was like, I either go all in with solar because my, my boys were crushing it. They were making like 100K a month. Mm -hmm. 100K a month, damn. In California. So yeah. we went out to a California trip and I was like, I got to check this out. Yeah. And I'll never forget it. I was out knocking doors and I was like, this isn't it. Like I just felt it in my heart, bro. This is not I it. I used to door me. knock. I know that feeling. Oh, you know the feeling. Yeah. And then we just had a talk and I was like, I just need to know where this money's gonna come from so we can make a decision here. Like I know that we can make this a success. Yeah. But he's like starting to be like, where is this money? So I'm like searching through emails. Like what could I do to prove to him that we, we can start making money from this? And I see yeah. an email from a manager and I'm like, I'm just gonna reply and take uh -huh. a call and see where this goes. He ended your life. up changing our lives. Yeah. What's going on? We got the Scott family on the podcast. How are What's you guys doing? Cool. Thanks for having us. I'm super excited to have you on. Same. Well, welcome to the Wealthy Investor Podcast, where we're going to go over investments with you guys. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, I'm we're ready. going deep. I'm ready. <laughs> so um, I know you guys haven't done a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we'll start off with your your story really quick before we transition to the wealthy way. So I guess, um, can you give us like your, your quick highlights for the people who aren't familiar with you guys? Yeah. You want, you want me to? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So we started, um, actually we had a business before social media and we were grinding right. at that. And when the pandemic hit, uh -huh. things went kind of sideways and we got cornered a little bit and we moved back in with, uh, my father-in-law, uh -huh. her dad. Oh. And we readjusted and we got addicted to studying social media because so many people are doing so well on it and uh -huh. they're a multimillionaire. So we started studying it and she stumbled upon TikTok uh -huh. and she's like, we need to do this. And I was like, nah, like, yeah. I'm not, I don't want to do TikTok. It's like a kid app. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and she was just like, sit here. I'm going to do this dance, which is funny because it's like our brand now. I know. It's so funny. <laughs> and <laughs> she did it. And I was studying like algorithms and numbers and likes and really? it went viral. It hit like 10,000 views in like 20 minutes. And I was like, Whoa. oh, yeah, we're on to something here. And yeah. then ever since that day, we started grinding like three to 10 TikToks a day. And Whoa. just was disciplined to it, said no to like family events, everything, because we just knew this was our chance. Yeah. Because social media, it's like every 10 years, there's a window yes. of a new app that comes around and we're like, this is it. Oh. And then we just started grinding. Yeah. Her, so. <laughs> so thanks to her. Okay. Yeah, thanks to her. Yeah. And now we're here and thanks. we have over, I think we're at 8 million followers now. on 8 all platforms. million followers? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So I guess, how old were you guys when you guys started doing TikTok? We had just turned 29. Oh, yeah. okay. So you guys are in your 30s right now? Yep. 30, yeah. 31. 31. Dang. So yeah, I'm 31 also. Oh, so cool. how does it feel being like... The old people? Uh, yeah, <laughs> like a 30-year-old TikToker. Because I feel like yeah. usually people think TikTok is like for like teenagers and stuff like that. Or you I think it's... At first, it was really intimidating because you're so right. Like everybody on the app was like yeah. literally 16, 17. Like yeah. we were like, where do we belong? So I feel like it was us and like a few other couples that kind of pioneered the couple space on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think today TikTok is so different than what it was a few years ago. Like uh -huh. a few years ago, it was definitely like kids dancing. Now yeah. it's evolved to vlogs, just like so many different things from like cooking to mm -hmm. lifestyle yeah. Yeah. that I feel like there's definitely a place for people in their late 20s, early 30s now, yeah. and even beyond that. But mm -hmm. a few years ago, definitely was not like that. <laughs> yeah, back then it was kind of put the blinders on. Yeah. And we were already broke. Uh, you know, yeah. we hit rock bottom. <laughs> so broke. it was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we weren't broke. We had like a savings, but like things just shifted for us. Yeah. And we just put our blinders on and was like, you know, we really don't care. Yeah. You know what people think about us. We're uh -huh. just going to, we have a vision for this. We saw all these successful couples on like YouTube driving Lamborghinis and like the homes. And yeah. I was like, we caught a vision and yeah. we had the vision for it. We set a plan and just like went for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you, you, you decided you're going to go all in on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Were you guys working or you were just doing TikTok? Solar. So, solar. Okay. Yeah, so you were I, doing, I was solar doing door to door yeah. sales. Yeah. So in the beginning of 2020, we auditioned to get our jobs back because mm -hmm. we uh -huh. were both working in the industry. And we also had a network marketing company as well, but we uh -huh. were trying to get our jobs back in the industry. I was working at Previously, I'd worked at Wet Republic. Access me too. Club. No, no way. way. I used to work at Wet. No I way. I used to work at Billionaires right what? here. Yes. My boy, <laughs> me too, for like three years. Yes. Yeah, yeah, bro. 
yeah. You know Unche or no? Yeah, Unche. Yeah, Jay, yeah, Jason Grasso, okay. all those guys. No way. Yep. That's yep. awesome. Small yeah. world, yeah. bro. I worked yeah. with those guys for what? three years. Okay, <laughs> worked that way. I didn't know that. That's where we met. Oh, you guys met at we Wear met Republic. Yeah. You were a cocktail waitress? So I worked at Excess, Encore Beach Club. Oh. And he was working at Wet. Wet. And so yeah. we, Got met, it. we met at like an outing. Okay, funny story. <laughs> so, okay, Tiesto was on, right? And I'm like, you know when we're going to do the the champagne, champagne shower yeah. thing? Yeah. So we go to the front, right? We're like grooving, about to do this the champagne shower. And I see this fine Mexican girl, <laughs> right? Super fine. So we lock eyes. And then I was like, let me be a gentleman. So I, w I walked up to her and I put her sunglasses over her eyes because I know champagne burns from experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The beat drops, spray champagne all over her. <laughs> And then ended up getting her number. Funny enough, we get married a year later, that's and now she's here. No way! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's literally scary. how we met. Oh, we have a similar I story. I mean, we met in the club. Okay, you guys met in the club. You can find love in the club. You man. can find love for in the sure. club. You can find love for in the club. Sure. For sure. Yeah. That, that's literally like our whole wow. story. Yeah. And then that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's and so then cute. She was really? there from California, um, on like a girls thing. And then um, got her number and, you know, started talking. And then, you know, I ended up moving to California. So that's why we, we, we live in, we lived in Chino. Cool. And yeah, we were, we so were So that's how you moved to California. Yep. That, that's okay, why I moved cool. to California. Now we have a daughter and another son. So. What an amazing story. I know. I Isn't that, that crazy? That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. You guys worked out wet, but yeah. um, sorry, you guys were working out wet, but then. Yeah. So we were auditioning for our jobs yeah. back. Initially, yeah. I wanted to go back to Encore. Yeah. And we both ended up not getting our jobs back because he worked at Excess too. We were kind of all over the industry. Oh. This was so, before the pandemic too. Oh, okay. Right before. Yeah. And it was like a God thing. You know, yeah. I think if we got those jobs back, we would have obviously got comfortable with the money again. Yeah. We yeah. good money. Yeah. But I think it was a God thing where he just like put a wall there yeah. and didn't let us get our jobs back. And yeah. then we had no choice but to grind TikTok. Got it. Yeah. And it just made us so hungry because we were like, we didn't get our jobs back. Uh -huh. Like, we're just going to prove everyone wrong. We're going we're gonna to crush this. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's, yeah. 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 So they they didn't just like accept you guys, like you auditioned, but yeah. they didn't hire you? Yeah, yeah we didn't get hired. Freaking Ray? Was Ray Davila, Ray Davila the guy? I don't I don't even remember. I don't even yeah. remember. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't even remember. Because we yeah. were out of the industry for a little bit. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. we were out of the industry for a little bit. It and then we tried off. going back because of everything that was going on. Yeah. Um, And we didn't get it. Got it was it. such a blessing though, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. of I course. Like one that. month later, the whole world shut down anyway. So none of the yeah. pools or anything even opened that year. hundred percent. So oh. it yeah. just worked out for it was us. Cool. <laughs> I remember that. So, all right, let's talk about the TikTok grind. So yeah. you guys start having some success. Things are, are going good. How do you make money? Cause I don't think TikTok like pays you, right? Um, they, they do pay you, but it's <laughs> not do. the best. It's not like YouTube AdSense or anything like that. Yeah. So most of our money comes from, I mean, spread out. We got TikTok, we got Instagram, um, but the big lumps of our money comes from brand deals. Like we work got with it. huge corporations. Got and it. We do like marketing for them and create ads for them. Got it. Yeah. So let's go through the journey. 2020, you started creating TikTok. Yeah. And then like, who was like, how much money did you guys make that year? None. Like, None. So there was like no From money. Social media, none. So it was Zero. it was such a crazy time okay. because it was I was grinding solar. So uh -huh. um, because it was a uh, what do they call it when you can still work? Essential. Essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was out knocking doors about fifty to sixty doors a day, and then I'd come home and we would grind like three to ten TikToks a day, mm -hmm. and it was just like this grind. And <laughs> That's we, it, crazy. it was a year of doing TikTok, and I was like looking at Tally, I was like, where's this money gonna come from, man? Like yeah. we're not making nothing. Yeah. Like solar, like I had a a turning point in my career. Yeah. I was like, I either go all in with solar because my, my boys were crushing it. They were making like a hundred K a month. Mm -hmm. A hundred K a month, damn. In California. So yeah. we went out to a California trip and I was like, I got to check this out. Yeah. And I'll never forget it. I was out knocking doors and I was like, this isn't it. Like I just felt it in my heart, bro. This is not <laughs> I used the door knock. I know that feeling. Oh, you know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> and then we just had a talk and I was like, I just need to know where this money's going to come from so we can make a decision here. Yeah. And I was scrambling at the time because I'm like, no, like I know that we can make this a success. Yeah. But he's like starting to be like, where is this money? So I'm like searching through emails. Like, what could I do to prove to him that we we can start making money from this? And I see yeah. an email from a manager and I'm like, I'm just going to reply and take uh -huh. a call and see where this goes. He, he ended up life. changing our lives. Yeah. Oh, you called the manager and then yeah. he, he emailed us and then we got connected with them, had a phone call and just took a leap of faith with them. And then yeah. it was just like, boom, from there.
Okay, tell me your worst door knocking story. <laughs> oh my gosh, worst door knocking story. I'll tell you mine really quick. Yeah, so tell me. I yours, remember I was uh, I was in Chino. This was literally on our street. Um, it's kind of rural area. Oh, I know one. There's like there's a, and I was knocking for real estate. So for people who had beat up houses. Yeah to like buy or wholesale their house or whatever. There's like this dirty looking guy. And um, I was like, hey, I was wondering if you guys wanted to sell this property. It looks kind of messed up. We buy houses. And he was like, yeah, yeah, come in. And he had like a trailer in front of his house, like an RV trailer. I go in there, it's full of trash, cigarettes, all this stuff. And there was like, uh, uh, I don't want to say the word, but something that looks like this on yeah. the countertop. And I was like, okay, well, you know, that's Ooh. not, that's not so weird. You know, I'm in his little space. He's talking. And then I think something happened where like he, he, me and him started going back and forth over like price. And then he grabbed it no. and I was like, Hmm. And then he came and sat near me and then I grabbed it from him because I was like, I just felt uncomfortable. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I you grabbed it. I, I had to. Oh wow. Because he came and sat near me with it on the table. So I was like, okay. So I grabbed it and I was like, why do, why do you have this? He's like, oh, you know, Bubba, I was going to show you. And then I stood up and I walked outside and then I was like, yeah, dude, I'm leaving. Thank you so much. Blah, 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 blah. But I kept it in my hand. He's like, you oh, are you going to take it? <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, I was like, I'm going to leave it over there by the road and then I'll catch up with you later. So I walked away, left it there and then like left. Dude. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing about the yeah. door. You don't know what door you're walking into. No. Like we, I, I don't know. It was sketchy because we walked into um, this house and we were not in the best area of LA. Like we were knocking in like a pretty- like downtown like, or where? It wasn't downtown. I don't know exactly where it's at, but it was yeah. like gangs were everywhere. Yeah. And we walked into a gang house and it's inside yeah. it was like hoarders. Yeah. It was just like bad. And me and my partner, Kevin, were like, yo, we got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, we got to, yeah, this yeah, is not yeah, good. Yeah, we should yeah. not be in this house right yep. now. We need to get out of here. Yeah. And we've met, a, I've met a lot of weirdos that you get in yeah. the house and you're like, what is going on right now? Yeah. I need to get the heck out of yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. yeah. But that's probably the, like the sketchiest is just being in those neighborhoods that yeah. you just felt you super be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. California's think, like that. Yeah, I don't know if I can even say this. On, I probably won't say it on the podcast. Say it. Well, well, if we if you to. can edit it out. But like, yeah, the day before we were knocking this neighborhood, the next day, a gang came by and took someone out, like literally four doors no from way. where we were out. Just yeah. a random dude. Yeah. And I was like, that was when I was talking to her. I was like, I, 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 I got to yeah. get out of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, well, so you guys started from the bottom pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that says. We've been through some seasons together. Yeah, hundred sure. percent. We've been through some so seasons. You found your brand manager. I don't know if it's a social media manager. Or agent. Know, a, an handles agent. Handles our brand deals. Okay, yeah. agent handles your brand deals. And then what happens? like? From there, we just kind of started creating systems, uh -huh. um, started getting educated a little bit more on content, how we can be better because it changes so fast, especially yeah. in the entertainment field. It's like one day, you know, dances are just popping off and then the next day it's, yeah. everyone's evolving to vlogs and voiceover yeah. vlogs, it's constantly evolving. So it was just us coming together and learning how to work together at yeah. a different level, creating uh -huh. systems yeah. um, and just really treating it like a business. Got yeah. it. Okay, so like in 2021, can you talk about like, how much money you guys were making? Did you guys break six figures or not really? Um, yeah, yeah, we did for sure. In okay. Yeah. 2021. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, 20, yeah 2021 we did really you well. did? We did really okay. well. We went from like zero to like, I don't even know how much, but it was it was a whole yeah, we, different we, we, lifestyle. We, really? Change, it was just crazy. Because sure. yeah. like, yeah. at first it was still uh, so new to us. We're like, yeah. money's coming in and it's coming in lump sums and you're like, is this going to keep coming? And yeah. it just kept coming and <laughs> yeah. coming. And it took us a while to get confident with yeah. what we were doing to kind of build out our lifestyle. Yeah. Because we just didn't know if it was going to stop, keep coming. Yeah, that's just, the scary part. Because yeah. TikTok was just so new. Yeah. You know, it wasn't yeah. something that, I mean, it was around for kids, but yeah. it was new for us. Yeah. Like social media. We were off social media for three years before we started. Got it. Yeah. So have you guys, might be a personal question, but have you guys made seven figures from social media? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah. moly. Yeah. It's Dang. Crazy. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. That is insane. So yeah. I guess, babe, we need to get on TikTok. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it, it comes from all areas of all of our platforms. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. We have. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. It's such a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing. It's, it's just crazy how it all 
came into fruition and we still pinch ourselves every day. We're yeah. like, I can't believe we're just it's grateful, man. Yeah. Grateful yeah. To, to be doing what we're doing because we love it. We love yeah. creating content. Okay, so let's talk about what what are the the best parts of you know your social media career and like the challenges. I think the challenges outside of like the obvious, like dealing with like negative comments and things like that. Like that's yeah. something that does not bother, bother Raj at all. Yeah. But for me, it definitely can get to me. Sometimes. Really? Yeah. It can. Right. Yeah. yeah. Why? People are, I mean, I say this in every career, like 10%, cr you're gonna have 10% crap with everything you do. hundred yeah. percent. You know, yeah. any job, totally. any career you have, you're gonna have that 10%. Our 10% is negative comments. Yeah. Like what do they say? Just, they just say like, oh, you're ugly. They like, just, they just want to like tear you apart. Yeah. They just like want to like crush you. And yeah. I always remind Ty, I was like, you know, just, just send them love because something deep down inside, yeah, of not, course. they're not feeling strong, they're of not course. feeling secure. Yeah. So yeah. don't let it bother you yeah. because you I know who you are. I try not to just like even read them because sometimes yeah. they're just like a lot, yeah. but it's pretty much just like, just think of like the craziest insults and it's always guys. Yeah, guys, always. guys are aggressive, dude. <laughs> Girls are yeah. so nice on social media. It's always dudes. Yeah, They're guys are like, crazy. Really? Oh my God, it's wild. So yeah. I'd say that's the hardest. And also like having to evolve, you have to evolve. You have to study yeah. and really like yeah. know yeah. what's working and how to translate that to your own, own audience or yep. else you will fall behind. Yeah. So you're just never just set. Like, all right, we yeah. made it. We made this movie. No. We're famous. No. no. It's like <laughs> constantly constant. evolving co uh, education coaches. Yeah. You know, and all. And you have coaches? Uh, yeah, I have a coach in um, really? content. Yeah. And what do they teach you? Just, there's so much like details that goes into like the algorithm of like YouTube and thumbnails. And there's just so much that goes into it. So they're teaching me like all the details. Really? You know, ARAC? Eric, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, he yeah, has yeah. Creator now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you're in Creator now. I'm in Creator now. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So the storytelling, the thumbnails, all that stuff. Got it. So yeah. we have wealthy creators, so, we're, so we kind of like do the same thing, but oh. we really focus on like monetizing. Oh, cool. Yeah, so like brand deals and stuff like that. Uh, not even like more like call to actions. Oh, cool. Ads, F uh, funnels, funnels, sales team, CRMs all that stuff because like so wealthy investor and all these other companies they're really like social media based like most of it comes from ryan's social, social media. media so we've learned how to like set up funnels to like okay dm me the word this and then you know people come yeah. in and then like the the thing is that we've noticed is like there's a lot of influencers or you know social media people who yeah. like they're good at making social media but they're not good at monetizing it. Or yeah. there's people who are really good at monetizing businesses, but then when they try to make social media, they they like can't do it for some reason. Gotcha. Like they get 300 Sense. views on like a TikTok. Like, so teaching that, like how to make content and then monetizing it. That's, I love that. the, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so a big awesome. thing we do. But um, all right, so you, you got a coach and you yeah. guys are killing it now. So like, what's next? Um. <laughs> so, there's actually a lot in store, but we're moving to Nashville Friday. Wait, when does this podcast come out? Uh, probably in the next two weeks. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool. Then yeah. everyone so we'll will know we're in Nashville. Nashville yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so no one knows yet. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm a singer-songwriter and don't really like post about it much. But really? Yeah, yeah. I used to be signed with a label. It was a local label based out of Vegas. Uh -huh. um, and it was great. I did an EP and it was awesome. But yeah. what I found from that whole experience was you can put so much time and energy and money into something. And if you don't have an audience to actually like show it to, it's yeah. it's probably only going to get heard by your friends and family. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, so that was kind of like the main reason why we wanted to start social media was yeah. for my music. And yeah. then it ended up evolving into something that we really love and have passion for. But initially we were like, oh, wow, this could actually be like an avenue to actually have my music be heard. Got so it. Like the whole reason why we started. So now it's finally time to actually put some music start out. Start singing. So That's why we're moving Nashy. Nice. You want to bust <laughs> some notes right now? Or I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so so that's the whole, that was the whole goal of starting social media was for music. Got it. Yeah. But like, how come you haven't like, I don't know if you have or not, but I haven't seen you like singing or. So I actually have a personal YouTube channel that I do uh -huh. covers on. I started yeah. it back in like 2017 Yeah. and it did really well, but I kind of got in my head at the time because social media was still kind of new Yeah. and I was doing really well. I was getting like a lot of views on yeah. YouTube. Um, I got invited to do like a singing show on YouTube with like Nikki Jam and Ludacris. And oh, really? it was a really cool experience, but I was like, man, am I gonna become known as like a cover artist? Like, do yeah. I need to take a step back? Which yeah. I think was the wrong thinking. I think 
any attention is good attention as long yeah. as you're like putting out like a good message yeah. and building a good brand. I think that I, it would have been fine, but yeah. I kind of got in my head a little bit. Uh, so I was like, I think I need to step back and just like work on my writing and then come back later. Yeah. So she's been crushing kind of it this year. I'll hype her up. Got it. She wrote like 50 <laughs> new songs. Really? She's been practicing every day. Okay. And our audience knows a little, they know that she sings, but they just don't know what type of music yeah. and how good she actually is. So we moved like five minutes from her producer. So we're just gonna be going back and forth just like busting out songs all year. Uh, this is like the music year for yeah, Talia. This is, this is the year. So we like held off on like starting businesses or doing anything to monetize our group with the product. Yeah. Cause we want to like really just show our audience like her music and what it is and like scale that. Got it. Yeah. So you haven't released any new music yet? No, it's been a few years since I've released an original. What's the like plan? When are you gonna like release something? I would say within the first few months of living in Nashville. Okay. I think that's probably realistic is to have at least one single out. Yeah. But I want to have like a full EP done. And then the goal is to get signed within the first year of living in Nashville. Got it. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. So we have a speaker that's about to come up that we want to go watch. But so we get, we have like 20 minutes. Um, I want to talk about the wealthy way. So yeah. cool. if you guys didn't know, so we had future flipper before. Yeah. Um, and then Ryan started the wealthy way. So the mission of the wealthy way is to build leaders in rich communities. That's the mission, right? For I the wealthy that. way. So that's why we rebranded uh, future flipper to wealthy investor and then rebranded uh, content empire to a wealthy creator. So I want to ask, Talia first, do you see yourself as a leader? I would say like, yes, but it feels kind of weird to say, <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I would definitely say that there are qualities that I have that I really feel are qualities that I could really teach people to become better versions of themselves. And it's uh -huh. not really something that we showcase too much on the internet, but, uh -huh. um, I definitely feel like I have qualities that definitely are in the leadership role. And I feel like I could definitely help people a lot in that like area. What? Can you go into it? Um, yeah, I think, I think something that people don't realize about social media, especially because we're like such a fun couple yeah. is, um, there's a lot of discipline that goes into it. There's a uh -huh. lot of, um, having to be on a schedule, having to be able to hold yourself accountable. There's mm -hmm. a lot of studying. There's just a lot of um, things that go into being successful on social media that mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of people, if they want to be successful on social media, might not realize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause even for me, I'm not super big on social media, but before I started making content, I was like, oh, of course they're successful. Like they dance and there's music. Like yeah. anybody could do that. Yeah. Like it totally. looks super easy. Mm -hmm. Or like you'll hear someone talk, you know, and make a reel and you're like, oh, that's easy. Like there's so much that goes yeah, into it. Yeah. So much editing, so much like what value are we adding? Like, yeah, there's yeah. just so much behind the scenes. So much, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another one for you. So do you see yourself as a leader in your relationship? I think Roger's leader in our relationship for sure. Got it. Okay. Absolutely. So is there some things you lead or like, does he lead the business or how does that work? He leads so much of our life. You would have no idea. Cause really? I feel like online, it looks like I'm running the show, <laughs> but Roger keeps our life together. I really? am actually I like all the back end. Yeah. Like, in the kindest way to myself, I'm kind of a hot mess <laughs> in ways. Like we I balance have, each other out great, you know? Yeah, yeah. like there yeah. are qualities about myself that I know I have a lot of strength in, but there's other ones that I don't. And Roger really helps me, you know, really refine those areas. But Roger keeps us together so much. Uh -huh. And I think that I can look at myself as a leader because he looks at me in that way and uh -huh. helps me so much in those areas of my life that I'm confident to say that. Uh -huh. But if it wasn't for Raj, I think I would have, I would be like, yeah, probably not. Really? <laughs> but he really builds me <laughs> no, up a lot. And I appreciate it. him yeah. so much for that. He's, he's amazing. There's so much to this guy that people don't see uh -huh. that I would love for him to show more mm. online. Like what? Oh, he's the most disciplined person in the world. Really? He's the most studious person in the world. He's uh -huh. like the type of person that if he says he's going to do something, he's a thousand percent doing it and like way better than you could ever imagine. Like uh -huh. he's such a strong person. I and appreciate that. Yeah, I just, he's amazing. But really? I feel like he doesn't show that enough. So I okay. hope this year yeah. that he can. All right. That's his challenge this year. Yeah. His challenge <laughs> yeah. This year, yeah. 
So what about you, Roger? Do you see yourself as a leader? Um, am I leading people right now? Probably mm -hmm. not, but leadership skills, I think I definitely have yeah. that in me. Yeah. Um, our last company, I was leading like 150 people. Yeah. So um, with coaching, skill sets, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I would say, I would say, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. as a leader, what do you think your strengths are and your weak, your challenges? Weaknesses and challenges. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Your strengths and your challenges. My strengths and my challenges. I don't know. Like, oh, no. like leading your, you know, are you guys married? I would, I would, you guys say, married, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I would say my strengths is discipline and consistency Got and it. like not afraid to work. Got it. Like I'm not afraid to just like put my head down and just work all day and like figure it out. Like I yeah. will figure it out. Yeah. Like I will, if I don't understand something, you give me two months, I will understand it in two months. Got it. That's like my, my mindset behind things. Yeah. So I think that confidence to figure it out maybe bleeds into other people where I can sit down and coach them and be like, Hey, this is something that I've learned. Yeah. And let me coach you in this area and try to get you to where you want to go. Got it. Yeah. And what about, it's funny that you said two months, cause usually people give stuff two minutes. They're like, Oh, I want to do this. Uh, I can't figure it out. No, it, it takes yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. It takes time. Like even with being in this coaching program, it's, uh -huh. it's just taking time. 100%. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm not here to rush things. I'm here to understand things, get yep. educated, yep. learn the skill set, and then dive in 100%. Yeah. That's that kind of my mindset on things. What about your challenges? Challenges is maybe I can get my own way. Like what? Lack of belief. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. um, like she'll say all these amazing things about me. Yeah. And then sometimes to, to show it or bring that out in different ways, uh -huh. maybe I get in my own way. Mm. a little bit yeah yeah like fear or doubt yeah. yeah you know like that that definitely creeps in but then when I start talking and I'm like I hear her and then I tr break down some of the things that I've done in my life I'm I'm like okay maybe I have a little something in there that I can bring out to like show to the world and teach and educate and coach yeah and lead I think this year for myself I so every quarter I usually have some sort of theme Mm -hmm. So like there was like, I think the third quarter, my theme was like, just do more. I, I noticed like I didn't have enough on my schedule. I would kind of be like, all right, I'm going to leave at three and then, you know, I'll just kind of hang out. Yeah. But like just putting more in my schedule, doing more. Um, and then I think for this quarter, I was, I heard Layla Hermosi say something like, um, I don't make decisions based off of fear. I make decisions based off of purpose. Love that. So kind of like how that. you said like, oh, like, you know, I don't know if this is going to work or some sort of fear yeah. or doubt creeps into your head and that makes you not do something instead of just going after 100%. things that you want to do. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. And I think this last couple of years has been me really trying to figure out that groove. You know, yeah. I went from a space of doing like straight coaching, discipline, self-development, um, yeah all mindset to like straight entertainment. Like yeah. We do straight entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, it was such a learning curve for me because yeah. I was like, I went from this like disciplined, consistent person and you would have to like push me to have fun because really? that's how disciplined I can get. I used to be like that too. And yeah. now it's like- I'm still like that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I get like that really yeah. hard. And now it's like straight entertainment, yeah. fun, exciting things happening in our life. Yeah. And just learning a whole different dynamic to videography and cinematography yeah. on our YouTube channel, which I love. I love everything that has to do with cameras. Like my whole mom's side of the family, they're all like on shows in LA and all yeah. that type of stuff. So it literally like runs in our, in yeah. our genes. Yeah. Um, but it's been a discovery for sure for myself, yeah. yeah. What about leading your relationship? So how how is it working with your wife? Besides I'll awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's amazing. I, we definitely have uh -huh. our challenges, but uh -huh. with our faith, we, we always yeah. go back to that and yeah. we kind of guide ourselves to day by day and work through our challenges. And yeah, so I think, I think it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Let's dig into exposing the freaking dark side. Okay. Yeah. So when you said challenges, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think scheduling. I'm a okay. time, I'm a big time guy. Like I'm, I'm early, yeah. I'm disciplined to time. If I say I'm going to make three TikToks at 10 to 12, uh -huh. we're making three TikToks at 10 to 12. And I have no sense of time. And she has <laughs> no <laughs> sense of time. No like, sense no. of time. <laughs> I'm like, everything is two minutes to Yeah, me. Like, you don't even have your phone right now. So yeah. I could see why you I don't have a sense of time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's been a huge hurdle for us. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. For okay. Time. Yeah. But yeah. I've learned to adjust and kind of step back a little bit and yeah. learned her personality with how she works and how she operates and yeah. adjust the times. And just when she's getting ready, I'll go take care of something else. Yeah. 
you know, and, and then I'll come back. Yeah. And we'll work together. Got it. But that took that took a good year. Yeah. To really? figure out. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, it was challenges at first. <laughs> You're like Google Calendar. What is that? Yeah. yeah. Man. yeah. Like we're doing this, 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 yeah. this. We'll be at the gym at this time. We're leaving at this time. Oh, like, okay. So you're very I'm very structured. Yeah. And it, it, it gives me like a sense of like control in our day. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, we're achieving what we want to achieve. We're not yeah. getting behind. Yeah. And we can leave room to focus on other things because we do social media, but we want to make room for music. We want to make room for real estate. We want to yeah. make room for these different areas in our life. Yeah. And it was a challenge at first because like, I can't make any room for anything because I'm trying to keep her on track on time, get yeah. his brand deals done. So it yeah. took us a while to figure out. Got it. Yeah. And what about for you? Is there any challenges besides the schedule? I think um, the first year of social media was a lot on me because he was doing solar. So uh, I had to like do everything yeah. on my own, like all mm -hmm. of 2020. Mm -hmm. And so um, 2021, learning how to like let go and have him like fully take over our YouTube, which he's done amazing at. But I think in that first year of like having to understand everything, mm -hmm. like editing wise and doing all that on my own, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And so having him come in and having to like kind of let him take over that side of the business. And mm -hmm. that was like a little bit rough, but he's been so, he's so good at YouTube now. It's Appreciate awesome. That. Okay. And then, so like, let's go back to the rebrand. So with the wealthy theme, so we want people to be wealthy and, you know, finances, relationships, health in their community um, and wealthy in their faith. You said that already. Yeah, you absolutely. said your guys' faith. I didn't know you guys had such a strong faith, to be honest, because I'm not super paying attention to like what's going on. I just see like, oh, they're on social media. We don't really show, like we showed like 10% of our life. Okay. You know, like 10, yeah. 20%. Yeah. A lot of the behind the scenes of like our faith walk and certain things that we do, we kind of keep to ourselves. Yeah. You know, and kind of just leave that for us and our relationship. Got it. Yeah. Do you guys feel comfortable talking about it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what does that mean to you? You guys have like a, a wealthy faith or. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. We got baptized together. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. At the Before same time? We were even like, yeah. well, it was like he got baptized first and then I was right after. We uh -huh. weren't even like officially. Do you know the Crossing Church? Uh, in Vegas? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's where we yeah. got baptized. Oh really? Yeah. 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 So yeah, like. local church before we moved. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like, how has faith like help like navigate your life? Oh, it's, I feel like it's been the staple. It's the foundation to our life. Uh huh. Um, I know when I was getting baptized, there was a season that I was going through that was a little bit rocky. Yeah. And then I had a, some good friends that were at the church and like, just come to church, come to church. Mm -hmm. Went to church and then started getting around it. And they're like, you should think about getting baptized. I was like, no, I'm good. Like, I'm, feeling <laughs> like, I'm just here learning, man. Yeah, here learning. Yeah. And then one time in church, I just, my stomach and just heart was pumping. Really? And I was like, I think today's the day, like God's calling me to get baptized. And I went to go change um, with Pastor Shane and do that whole thing. And then Talia was right behind me. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm gonna get baptized too. And I was like, wow. Wow, yeah, like that's awesome. incredible. And then from there, it just kept growing and getting stronger and stronger and yeah. stronger and be led. Yeah. Being led, I would say that's, that's like our big thing, just like listening and praying and yeah. making decisions off that rather than making decisions off our own knowledge. Cause that gets us in trouble. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about for you? I think Jesus has always been like the center of our relationship. And I think that's what yeah. makes to us, what makes our marriage so special is because we really feel like he brought us together. We were two totally like broken people, bad habits, mm -hmm. in the clubs a lot, you yeah. know, just yeah. like living for us rather than living through Jesus and through our purpose. Uh -huh. And it was like, literally once we started dating, we cut all of that out. We got baptized together. And it's like, since he is the foundation, since he is the center, yeah. we've always been able to come back to him even when things are rough, when yeah. things are confusing and having that faith has just given us so much peace in life, knowing that yeah. no matter where we are, we know where we're going as long as we follow yeah. him and his path for us. What about, have you ever had a religious experience? As in like- Like maybe you feel like you got a clear message or a clear feeling oh yeah. or a clear- oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. With just decisions that we're making, we're like, oh, that's 100% it. Yeah. Nashville is 100% it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we were like completely guided there. Really? Oh, oh yeah. What about we you? We prayed about it for months. Like a specific story? Like, yeah, like a specific story where it was so clear where you're like, holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> Should I share? 
Which one are you talking about? The raccoon. <laughs> Oh yeah, we like ask for certain things. Of, like, okay, design. so like I will sometimes ask for a sign. Yeah. And sometimes have it be like physical or I don't know. And one time I was sleeping and I literally kept hearing raccoon, raccoon. It woke me up from my sleep and I was like, raccoon, why in the world would I hear this? Yeah. And at the time I didn't understand what it was. I thought, oh, maybe like look for a raccoon and like, yeah. I don't know. But come to find out, the state animal of Nashville is actually a raccoon. Really? And I have no idea if it's together or not. Yeah. But that's just, a just weird one experience. example of like, oh, it, dude, there's it this felt one. so crazy to me. I was this like, is crazy. Oh, we got to explain the full story because this is wild. So we were praying hard about science because I was about to make a life decision of stopping solar. Uh -huh. You know, that's like a huge decision. On, we're not making money. I'm about to stop doing this. Like, yeah. God, show us a sign. Show us anything. Like anything. Just give us anything. Yeah. And we were praying day, every day every yeah. night trying to figure it out and then she woke up in the middle of the night and she just got this raccoon and i was like i don't know what the hell yeah it's weird yeah, yeah. Weird. yeah. It's weird. and <laughs> we're at her father-in-law's house and we're like let's go look at this apartment mm -hmm. and we're, we go into this apartment complex the gate opens we cruise in and we're cruising through and we're like looking at tanager in vegas mm -hmm. you know where that's at downtown summerlin area no i'm not sure now okay it's right next to downtown summer and we're cruising through and Talia just starts freaking out. She's like, stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, what? She's yeah. like, reverse. And we reverse and look to the left and there's a raccoon uh -huh. in the window uh -huh. on a, in a painting. It was our what? Hung up, bro. Yeah. And I was like, what? And I was like, maybe this is, because we we're looking for a place to live. And I was like, oh, this must be where we're going to live. Yeah. It was the best decision we've ever made. Yeah, it was like, like really? it was the really? best experience and like the life decision we've ever had. Yeah. What? And then it's just been kind of guiding us ever since. Yeah. Like, well, I was like, hey, show us a raccoon God and like he will show us. <laughs> So weird. So when we found out that so National asking you to receive and like yeah. I don't know if that's weird or it sounds probably weird. sounds so weird. It sounds yeah. crazy, but, it's just but yeah. that's like been a constant in our life when we ask for a sign. Yeah, it's just, this raccoon yeah. always yeah. shows up. And raccoon is the natural <laughs> state animal, which is funny. Yeah, we're sitting there like, so weird. where do we go from Newport? And yeah. we started praying about it, and we're like, yo, show us a raccoon. Yeah, like, this has been something very it's positive so in our weird. life. Yeah, and literally, I don't. I was like, what is the state animal of Nashville? Yeah, and it was a raccoon. That's crazy. It's so weird. So, yeah. Who knows? Maybe it might not have any connection. Maybe we overthink it, but mm -hmm. it's been something that's. That's been funny. I, I, I never so thought we'd share that, especially on a podcast. <laughs> I never thought we would. I think my my wife and I, when we were deciding to move to Vegas or not, she she told me that um, she did the same thing and asked like God, like give me a sign, like I wanna, I wanna know if this is the right decision or not. And I think right, babe, you said you turned on the the radio. And she turned on the radio and the very first thing was like, oh, if you're thinking about moving to Vegas, this is what you should I do, love blah, 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 blah. I feel That's like God so speaks cool. in so many different ways. Yeah. yeah. You just listen and pay attention and then pray about what sign he just gave you. Yeah. Then it just gets confirmed. Yeah. Yeah. And 100%. It makes life amazing and fun. It makes it yeah. fun and exciting. So, and then to go back to the wealthy way. So we've talked about, you know, wealthy you know, in your spirit, finances, health, relationships, community. So w what does it mean to you guys to like live the wealthy way? I think in all walks of life, like I yeah. just, you can't be, I had to learn this the hard way where you can't be too focused in one area of yeah. like work and grind and like making money and doing that. So I think the wealthy way for us is in every area of our life to, mm -hmm. to master it, to yeah. be great at it, to yeah. master our relationship, master our faith walk master our businesses, master our family, and really yeah. just like take that seriously uh -huh. and make room for it. Yeah. And that makes us have an abundant life. Yeah. And what about you? I would oh, yeah. say same, all yeah. five walks of life. I think it's really easy to be satisfied when like your finances are going well or if your relationship's going well, but I yeah. think there's so much that actually adds up to a wealthy life and it's having a strong, you know, good relationship with your family and friends, at least for us, um, having your finances on track, taking care of your spiritual walk, making sure that you're well, healthy, emotionally, mentally, physically, all of that. I think it all adds up to yeah. having a wealthy life. All right, before we go watch Avery speak. So how, Roger, do you make sure that you're being a good leader with your wife? Communication. Yeah, we have meetings every Sunday. You have meetings? Yeah. Is there like we, coffee we, and we notepads? Or? Well, just, if the, you know, <laughs> things happen during the week where let's say like I bug her, she bugs me. We just yeah. want to talk about it in the week. Yeah. We talk about 
what went great, what didn't go great, how we can be better, like straight communication. Really? Yeah. So we really try to like work through our problems so that we go into the next week, we can really just like be better for each other. Yeah. Yeah. And then you talked about having to learn the hard way about focusing too much on business. Yeah. What, what did that mean? Just cut, I cut everything out. Like I cut everything out with my last business and network marketing. I just got so disciplined and just crazy about it. Yeah. That I was making no room for anybody. Yeah. It was like, I was chasing money. Yeah. I was chasing money. 100%. That's like the root of all evil is chasing money and never yeah. leads to something good. Yeah. And it was just ruining relationships, ruining things. And thank God for her. She was like a godsend uh -huh. where she kind of checked me, made me reevaluate a lot of things and got me balanced out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does she check you? <laughs> She did, she did. She's like, hey, she, hey, she's five foot, but she's spicy, bro. She's spicy. She's Latina. No, nothing like that. But she just, she just reminded me what's important in life. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Yeah, just constantly reminded me about family and, you know, um, what to focus on. Got it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Wealthy for having Investor us, bro. Podcast. So I appreciate first you podcast, guys. man. First podcast. Go. I'm going to hurry up and books. get this out before they end up on <laughs> Joe Rogan or something. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wild. That would be awesome. We appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank All you right. So much. This was the Wealthy Investor Podcast. Peace. Peace. <laughs>